Okay. Well, uh, my name is Feliciano Priego. I came from the University of Córdoba, uh, which is at the south of Spain. Uh, my research group is affiliated to the analytical chemistry department and also to the Maimonides Institute of Biomedical Research, also located in Córdoba. As many of you know, methods for analysis of phenolic compounds in olive oil can be classified in four main groups. The first group is based on colorimetric tests, such as the Folincio Calto method, the total polyphenols index, or the Aristoleo text. These two methods provide a measure of the total containing phenolic compounds, while the Aristoleo test is giving information about the sum of oleocanthal and oleacin. These methods are characterized because they are fast methods. They have a relatively low selectivity, as they are providing all the total content of phenolic compounds, or the, the sum of oleocanthal or, or, or oleacin. And that's why they, they are low selective methods. The second group is based on NMR analysis. Here we have the, the very nice examples of the, of the method proposed by Magiatis in 2012 and updated in 2014. These methods are typically characterized because these are really fast. They have a high selectivity, so NMR is a typical technique to elucidate a structural the structure of, uh, molecular, of, of organic compounds, and uh, they have uh, a low sensitivity. However, the sensitivity is enough for analysis of phenols in olive oil. The third group is LC liquid chromatography coupled to ultraviolet detection, which is uh, one of the most used uh, techniques in analysis of phenolic compounds, in fact, the International Olive Oil Council uh, have, uh, has a method uh, based on LC ultraviolet detection for analysis of phenolic compounds. Here you can see the reference chromatogram. These methods are characterized because they are uh, low selective, particularly for secoridoids due to low resolution, and that's why they are time consuming methods. Typically, uh, you can take more than 30 minutes of analysis per sample. In this case, it's uh, almost 60 minutes. And finally, the fourth group uh, encompassed those methods based on LC coupled to tandem mass spectrometry detection, not to simply mass spectrometry. It's uh, tandem mass spectrometry de detection. These methods are characterized because of the high selectivity, particularly in MSMS mode. High sensitivity, typically detection limits are in the range uh, between nanograms per grams to picograms per grams. And they are typically uh, providing fast methods with frequency of analysis even below of five minutes per sample. LCMSMS is the reference technique uh, is a considered a reference technique, and in fact, is frequently used for validation and verification of results proposed by other methods. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, LCMSMS method for analysis of phenolic compounds that we developed last year. It was presented in Baeza the last the last year, and now has been updated with inclusion of now compounds. The experimental protocol for uh, sample preparation is quite easy. I would say that uh, is the traditional method for analysis of olifenols. The method involves solubilization of olive oil in exane, and then a dual liquid-liquid extraction of step with methanol and water. Finally, the hydroalcoholic phase is directly analyzed or uh, after a dilution by LC-MSMS. As you can see, the termination step just take five minutes. Here you can see the, the skin of the, of the instrument. This is the LC system, as this is the, the triple quad mass spectrometer. 
And the operational mode that we use is the selected reaction monitoring mode. I'm going to explain a little bit about that. Phenolic compounds separated uh, chromatographically are ionized in the electrospray uh, source. Then, precursor ions for each compound are filtered in the first quadrupole, sequentially filtered in the first quadrupole, are fragmented in the collision cell, and then uh, the representative product ions for each precursor ion are monitored in the third quadrupole. So here, what we are monitoring are transitions from precursor ion to product ion, which increase even the, the level of, of, of uh, selectivity. Here you can see a, a, a table with the parameters of the S selective reaction monitoring mode method for determination of phenolic compounds. The, 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 de the detected phenols are hydroxytyrosol and tyrosol, oleacin and oleocanthal, the two aglycons. We can see two isomeric forms here. The aldehydic forms of both aglycons and also luteolin and apigenin as flavonoids. Here we have the retention time. The last compound is eluted at 4.1 minutes. The precursor ion for each compound, the voltage selected in the first quadrupole for filtering, the collision energy for fragmentation in the collision cell, the quantitative transition, and the other ions used as qualifiers uh, to confirm the identity of each compound. And you can see, for instance, in the case of hydroxytyrosol and oleacin, they have the same product ion. However, they have a different precursor ion, so it's not possible to, to confuse them. On the other hand, we have some compounds with the same transition, for instance, oleuropein aglycone and, and the aldehyde form of oleuropein aglycone. However, they are chromatographically separated. Most of the phenolic compounds have at least two or three ions for confirmation, except for tyrosol and the two flavonoids, which are uh, the, the fragmentation, uh, which have a fragmentation pattern uh, well, uh, well defined. In order to confirm the quantification, we must be all the transitions, okay? So it's not enough just to observe one of the transitions. All these product ions are structurally elucidated by, uh, have been structurally, structurally elucidated by LCMS in high resolution mode with a cut-off instrument. Here we can see selected reaction monitoring chromatograms for two of the compounds, oleocanthal and oleacin, which are eluted at one minute and one minute and a half. And here you can see the MSMS spectra. These are the, 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 the product ions which are used for quantitative analysis or as qualifiers. And the same for oleacin. As, previ as previously mentioned, in the case of the, of the aglycons, we are able to separate two peaks. We are able to detect two peaks. In this case, well, chromatographic resolution is good, and in this case, what we can do is to quantify together, or it's also possible to quantify them by, in an independent way. This peak corresponds to the mono, the aldehyde, aldehyde, aldehyde form, aldehydic form of the of the aglycone. Okay, so it's saluted at one minute and a half, and here at one minute. Quantitation is carried out by preparing calibration models using a phenols free refined oil, which is spiked with the target analytes at different concentration. In this, ca in this case, the, the olive oil uh, is spiked from uh, 0 0.25 to 5 um, milligram per kilogram. Here you can see two different calibration models. One prepared with the refined olive oil, which is subjected to the same sample preparation than, than the target samples, and also 
uh, the, the second calibration model with uh, uh, by injection of the olecanthal standards in, in pure methanol. If we compare the, the, the calibration parameters of the two models, we can see uh, matrix effects just by comparing the, the slope, which is lower here, which is lower here, or the intercept, which is higher here. Okay. After description of the method, I'm going to, I'm going to present the, the results that we have obtained in collaboration with the Department of Agronomy of the University of Córdoba, particularly with uh, professors Diego Barranco, Luis Rayo, and Concepcion Muñoz. The purpose of this, of this study is to characterize the phenolic composition of monovarietal uh, oils obtained from uh, certified olive trees uh, from specific varieties. These varieties are located in an experimental field, which is called the CIRGO, which is the acronym of the International Center of Olive Tree Genetic Resources. And uh, these plants are uh, genetically certified uh, uh, and, and confirmed. So the CIRGO has a laboratory, a laboratory to confirm uh, the identity of new varieties. The CIRGO has more than 500 olive tree varieties and uh, we hope to be extended to 1,200 varieties in collaboration in a project uh, in collaboration with the International of Olive Oil Council. In the first uh, experiment, we have analyzed the phenolic profile of uh, monovarietal olive oil from 100 varieties representing the most abundant in terms of worldwide production. And here is a, is a table with uh, some, uh, with a concentration of uh, phenolic compounds detected in, in these varieties. So we have the hydroxytyrosol and the, the two flavonoids with a variability from 0 0.3 or 0 0.7 to uh, a value below 10 milligrams per kilograms. However, when we go to the secoridoids, the variability range is considerably higher. For instance, olecanthal was detected from 43 to 1,000 milligrams per kilogram, oleacin from 28 to 618, the lixtroside aglycone from 1.6 to approximately 75 milligrams per kilogram, the aldate forms from almost practically not detected to uh, 1,300 or 1,800. On the oleuropein aglycone that was also detected from 3.1 milligrams per kilogram to uh, 918. Here you can see the median values for the analyzed cohort and the standard deviation. Now I'm going to show you the results uh, obtained by multivariate analysis with principal component analysis for the 40 of the 100 varieties. Uh, we selected just 40 in order to make easier visualization of results. And we try to cover all the variability range in, in analysis. The objective of the study is uh, to m evaluate the stability of the phenolic profile along different seasons. Okay. Then we will try to uh, compare in certain way the uh, uh, heredability also with uh, the, of the phenolic compounds in a cross-breeding program uh, targeted at obtaining new varieties. So in this by-plot principal component analysis, we have two discrimination levels. The first discrimination level is concerning the concentration of secoridoids along the first principal component. So we have olive oils from varieties with high concentration of secoridoids on the right side. And we have olive oils from uh, monovarietal oils from varieties, sorry, with low concentration uh, with a less specific pattern of secoridoids. And then we have a second a discrimination level along the second 
principal component, by which we are able, in a certain way, to discriminate uh, varieties with a high concentration of oleocantalan and oleacin, and varieties with a higher concentration in the aglycone forms. I mean, the purpose here is not to establish, to establish the levels of phenolic compounds in varieties. As you know, uh, there are a lot of uh, factors contributing to the levels of phenolic compounds in olive oil. We have uh, agronomic factors, we have production factors, we have uh, extrinsic factors, what, any factor can influence the, the, the composition. And just an example, we analyzed uh, 10 samples from a, a typical variety in Spain, which is Piqual, and we were able to detect uh, a similar concentration range, quite similar concentration range that I, I have shown before. In fact, the concentration range was from 100 milligrams per kilogram in oleocanthal to 600 milligrams per kilogram. The only difference of these uh, samples were that uh, there were the, these samples corresponded to olive trees that were sampled uh, in different, that were cultivated in different places. Okay. Uh, also, it's important, I didn't say before, that all the samples were uh, collected at the, at the same ripening state. Okay? So, as we have seen, uh, one of the, well, the, the most important phenolic family in, in, in phenols is secoridoid. So, the key pathway in, this, in the composition of polyphenols is here. So, we have lixtroside and oloropane. Then we have the two haglicons, which are in equilibrium with the aldehyde forms. We have here uh, the uh, oleocanthal and the uh, um, oleacein. And finally, well, we have the hydroxytyrosol and tyrosol. So it's evident that if we are able to control or to know how it could be influenced, this pathway, by, by all these uh, factors that can contribute to, to modify the phenolic composition uh, in certain way could be used to obtain olive oils with a specific phenolic composition or with a specific phenolic pattern. However, uh, we cannot forget that uh, we cannot lose olive oil quality. As you know, olive oil quality is uh, in certain way governed by the organoleptical test. Okay? So this is an, an important point. So as conclusions, I'm going to say that the LCMSMS method allows quantitative analysis of phenolic compounds with a special emphasis on sequoidoids. The determination step takes just five minutes per sample. Sensitivity is particularly high with detection limits around low nanograms per grams. So it's quite important uh, for uh, application in bio via availability studies. Low sample amount is required, just one, one gram. And uh, it's important to understand the main factors, as I told before, the main factors influencing the phenolic composition. And finally, I would like to thank the two persons who has contributed to the development of the method, Veronica Sanchez de Medina and Christopher Mio. Also, the funding organisms, the Spanish Ministry and the International Olive Oil Council. And also I would like to thank, special thank to Professor Magiatis and Professor Eleni Miyu, because uh, they have uh, been involved in the development of the method with an invaluable input. Okay, well, thank you very much for your attention.